Ahoy and welcome to Prague and another episode of the Mars Guide. Now in this video we're going to look at this wonderful cube style building called the House of the Black Madonna. But just what is a Black Madonna? And finally we're going to ask just how did people manage to find their way around Prague at a time when here in Prague there were no street numbers. Well we'll come back to that later. But first cubism because this building behind me is one of the first examples of cubist architecture in Europe and as you will have guessed uh, I'm not an artist or an architect so my apologies to any artists and architects out there and if I get things wrong please do correct me but before we get into my simplistic look at cubism a bit of background for hundreds of years artists aimed to create a realistic view of the subjects in front of them whether that was people objects or buildings the picture, for instance, had a series of virtual lines that all converged to one point called the vanishing point. It's called perspective, and this was the accepted approach for centuries, but for some artists, in particular in the 19th century, the French painter Paul Cézanne, who was associated with a number of different art movements, argued that the painting only had one view, the view of the artist. Cézanne said that when he was painting a still life, for instance, Often what he wanted to do was to walk around it and look at it from a different view, to give it a number of different perspectives, and he wanted to find a way of doing that and representing that on a 2D surface. The style of Cubism originated in France about 1907 and was pioneered by Pablo Picasso, who was Spanish, and George Braque, who was French, and they were inspired by Cezanne's ideas. Cubism is a style of art which aims to show all the possible viewpoints of a person or an object all at once on a 2D surface. And it's called Cubism because the items represented in the artworks look like they are made out of cubes and other geometrical shapes. The term Cubism didn't come into full use until 1911, and it's thought to have originated possibly from the comments of the French art critic Louis Vaucelles, who, at an exhibition of Braque's work, described it as reducing everything, places and figures and houses, to geometric schemas, to cubes. And here are some examples of the work of Picasso and Braque. And it's interesting if we look back at an earlier work of Cezanne, where we can see, perhaps, an early form of Cubism. Cubism was one of the most influential artistic movements of the 20th century that impacted not only on art, painting, but on literature, theatre, music, and as we're going to find out, architecture too. And there were a number of different periods and styles of Cubism that developed over the decades. But back to architecture. Cubist architecture had its origins in the Parisian Salon in 1912 where a model of a 10 by 3 meter cubist house, which had been designed by a number of different artists, was presented. The inside of the house was also decorated and furnished in a cubist style. And here are some examples of cubist furniture designed by Joseph Gotchar, who took these cubist ideas and incorporated them into the design of the House of the Black Madonna, not only the building, but the interior too. Joseph Gotchar was Czech and born in 1880. He studied at the School of Applied Arts in Prague and in 1912 formed with other Czech architects the Prague Art Workshops. In 1912 he was commissioned by František Herbs to build what would be a department store with a café and apartments. Now, this picture shows what stood here originally. However, because of its city centre location, Gotcha's building was subject to strict planning rules, requiring that the department store would not be architecturally in conflict with the historical buildings that would surround it. For instance, if you look all around here, you can see that the buildings have a Baroque style to them. And one of the ways that uh, Gottschall was able to get permission to construct this building was to incorporate both styles. And that was through the use of the mansard roof, characteristic of the Baroque style, since the style with its sloping angular roof is consistent with the aims of Cubism. So although the building has a lot of Cubist features to it, it is not purely Cubist. In addition, Gotcha wanted to create large interior spaces without any ceiling supports, so he used a reinforced concrete skeleton. And you can see how well this works in the Grand Café Orient, which encompasses the entire first floor without any sporting pillars, and was a revolutionary feat of engineering. So talking of the Grand Café Orient, uh, I really love coming here, and if you want to, you can really immerse yourself in this Cubist art form. To me, it's wonderfully atmospheric, it's really intriguing, and if you come to Prague, you must come and visit the Café Orient. 
Yes, it is touristy, and yes, it is a little bit more expensive, but I think it's worth it. And if you really are a true fan of Cubism and you want even more, right next door you'll find the Museum of Cubism. The House of the Black Madonna was only a department store up until 1922, and gradually over the years it was converted into office space. After the Velvet Revolution in 1989, it was reconstructed and this cafe opened again in its full glory in 2002. But the House of the Black Madonna is not the only example of Cubist architecture in Prague. In fact, there are many different examples. Just going to flash through a few of them here. And even more recently, on this Cubist theme, the Keystone Building, an office block which was opened in 2012, was actually built in the Cubist style. So why is it called the House of the Black Madonna? Well, because of this statue behind this grill. This is the name of the sculpture which was on the corner of this house. It was removed from the house that was in this space previously. That house was demolished in 1910 to make way for this new building here. And the idea of the architect Gotcha was to bring the old statue and use it as an element of the new house. And that is why the name has been preserved. But just what is a Black Madonna? The term Black Madonna or Black Virgin tends to refer to statues or paintings in Western Christendom of the Blessed Virgin Mary and the Infant Jesus, where both figures are depicted as black. Black Madonnas can be found both in Catholic and Orthodox countries across Europe and in Latin America too. Among the most well-known Black Madonnas are Our Lady of Montserrat in Catalonia and Our Lady of Czestochowa in Poland and the Lady of Czestochowa is regarded as the most popular shrine in Poland, with many Polish Catholics making a pilgrimage there every year. When people first come across a black Madonna, they ask, why is she black? Well, there appears to be a number of ideas, but no general agreement between the church, academics and researchers. One suggestion is that they were originally white, and that the colour has changed over the centuries due to smoke from candles or the ageing of the paint. But then the counter-argument is, why only their face and hands? Wouldn't you expect darkening of the entire painting or sculpture? Another explanation associates the Black Madonna with a biblical verse, a saying that refers to the words of the Bible in the Song of Solomon, I am black, but come ye, O ye daughters of Jerusalem. Also, it is more historically accurate, since Mary would have had darker skin, having been born in the Middle East. Others have suggested, however, that there is a strong connection to ancient pre-Christian pagan rituals and the worshipping of the Mother Earth and other female gods, and if you think about it, Christianity has, in time, adopted many pagan rituals, such as the Christmas tree, carnival, singing carols, and fathers giving away their daughters at their wedding. So, the bottom line is, no one really knows why, or can agree on a reason. Also, because of this distinctive name, people know where it is located, and giving the names to buildings was used as a way for people to find their way around Prague, around the city, before the arrival of street names and numbering that arrived here around about 1770. So in Prague you will see a lot of house signs, often situated above the entrance to the building. Some of them date from the 14th century and were carved from stone. Later signs were made of metal or wood and they use different symbols, animals and colours to make the house signs more recognisable and distinct. The signs often said something too about the owners and their occupations. In this example it is the House of the Black Sun, but there are many more here in Prague. For example, the Golden Globlet, the Three Violins, the Golden Tiger and the Green Frog. So this was quite useful at a time when there weren't any street numbers. Imagine, for instance, you said, look, we're having a meeting at the House of the Black Madonna. You come over Charles Bridge, you go past the Golden Snake on your right-hand side, take a left at the Golden Well, you go past the Black Star on your right, and you get to the small square. Go past the Blue Horse, go over the Old Town Square, keep to your right, you'll go past the White Line on your right-hand side, then the White Peacock, then you'll see the Red Eagle on your left-hand side, and just above that, to your right, is the House of the Black Madonna. See you at seven. Well, not entirely accurate, but you get the picture. And so, on to our next stop.
So there we are. That's our look at Cubism, the House of the Black Madonna, and how people got around Prague when there weren't any street numbers. If you have enjoyed this video, please don't forget to click and subscribe by pressing the subscribe button and pressing the little bell so that you get notified. Uh, next time, we're going to look at the municipal house behind me and the powder tower too. So until then, thank you once again for watching.